So what is Mirror's Edge? Well, it's this. But it's also a first-person platformer released by EA DICE in 2008 for Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. It's all about the free-running and fast-climbing and jumping shit that all the kids are into nowadays. Now some of you might be thinking, DICE? I think I've heard of them before. Have they made any other games that are as sleek and artistically elegant as this one? <laughs> no, they made these. Requesting repair. Yeah, these are the Battlefield guys, and I love these games to death. In the mid-2000s, DICE was absolutely one of my favorite developers. Well, Bad Company was kind of meh, but whatever. So when I first heard that the next game was going to be some weird stylized parkour thingy, I was like, What? But, but what about all the shooty shooty pew pews and the I like that stuff. And I just put the game off for a few years. Yeah, I had some friends who were raving about it, constantly begging me to play it with their desperate pleas of Yeah man, it's a pretty good game, you should check it out. FUCK THEM! You can't tell me what to do! But one day it was like five bucks on Steam, so uh... So in Mirror's Edge, you play as Faith Connors, a courier living in a dystopian future who delivers messages for those who want to avoid surveillance by the city's totalitarian spying programs. <laughs> Which is totally fiction, right? A country would never spy on its own citizens like that. So the basic plot is that a mayoral candidate running on a platform of deregulation for the city is murdered and your sister is blamed for it and arrested. So you got a rescuer, you know, standard damsel in distress bullshit. It's simple enough, but it never really held my interest. The story is told largely through these stylized animated cutscenes, which are cool, but they somehow make the plot seem distant from the events that you actually play. It's like they exist in a separate world connected only by this guy chatting you up in your earpiece. You never end up caring for these characters because you never really meet them. Only Faith meets them in cutscenes. And this makes it especially jarring when a character that you previously only saw in the cutscenes is finally seen in the game. Deaths and betrayals don't really impact you because the animation style creates this artificial barrier between your experiences, and it's kind of disappointing because the dystopian future and political thriller subject matter is really kind of interesting. If only they actually conveyed it better in the game. Regardless of my issues with the story, I can still say one thing about Mirror's Edge. This game is fucking beautiful. Even after five years of being out, the vibrant art style is fantastic and it really helps to make the world visually stimulating, with its stark white cityscapes and spots of ridiculously saturated color. You got bright blues and reds and greens and yellows and every color in between. This ain't no Gears of War, bro. This game takes your dull grays and browns and shoves them up your ass. That's a new world record and ugly. But yeah, yeah, the game looks great, blah, blah, blah. But what's a good looking game without good gameplay? And this is where things get a bit wishy-washy. Now when this game works, it works really well. The gameplay is exhilarating and fast and it really feels great to play. When you do well and get your timing right for jumps and avoiding obstacles, you get a genuine sense of satisfaction, like, yeah, I dodged that shit, I'm pretty cool. And when you mess up a move or die, you get the feeling that, yeah, I messed up and it sucks, but it's okay, because I know it's my fault and I can do better next time. However, when the game fucks you, it is not okay. I can't tell you how many times I've died in this game because of this bitch was you fucking screwed me over when I did exactly what I had to do. I clearly should have grabbed onto that ledge. Dead. I clearly should have jumped farther than that. Dead. The game shouldn't punish you for no good reason. Now some of you may be like, Ugh, just quit your bitching and be better at the game. And I guess you may be right. Maybe if I devoted more time to memorizing the pathways and the timing, I wouldn't have this problem. But is this really what you want out of a parkour game? Memorization? Because that's essentially what this is. In order to make it to the end of a level, you basically just need to follow the red thingies. What they call runner vision. Pretty much a way to hold your hand and make sure you don't get lost. Well, you occasionally have the opportunity to take a couple different paths, but it's all just window dressing. The paths don't deviate for very long, and in the end, they take you to the same place. Well, maybe I'm just asking for too much. Maybe I just wish the game played more like Assassin's Creed, where the free running is a bit more, I don't know, free? But honestly, even with all the red thingies and a button that literally points me where to go, I ended up getting lost quite a bit. The design of some levels just wasn't intuitive enough for me to figure out where to go. But none of this happens frequent enough for me to stop being entertained. And I've really enjoyed it so far. I just hope that the problems I've mentioned don't bog down the rest of the game. What? It's over? How long did that take? Four hours? That's it? Some people paid 60 bucks for this game and that's all they get? I mean the time trials add a little bit more, but still, four hours is ridiculous! 
And the ending is just terrible. Without giving anything away, it's just really unsatisfying and doesn't give any meaningful answers. And of course it ends on a cliffhanger. Now this isn't Halo 2 levels of cliffhanger, but still it leaves us kind of pissy and waiting for more. But now that I think about it, I'm kind of glad that it didn't drag on too long. I was getting increasingly frustrated with every level and I was kind of worried that the running might get boring after too long. So I guess this is sort of a good thing? It still sucks if you paid full price for it though. So in the end, what do I think about Mirror's Edge? Well, it's kind of hard to say. There were times where I thought it was an amazingly revolutionary platformer that really pushed the genre in a unique and interesting direction. But there were also times where it made me want to rip my hair out and kill myself. The thing is, I recognize the potential that this game has to be something truly awesome, but the product that DICE delivered just isn't. It tries to offer more than it can give, and what should be a fantastic free-running mechanic ends up falling flat half the time due to little problems here and there. I feel like this game might have been more suited to an open-world environment, but I guess that's just personal preference. The best way I can sum it up is that it's an occasionally amazing game. Its high points are incredibly high, but it crashes down to mediocrity more than a few times. But the game's brevity actually helps it in this regard by keeping it from getting stale. So if you're willing to put up with the crap in order to find those great memorable moments, I definitely recommend you play Mirror's Edge. Well, I'm off to the store to get a new game to review. I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. I'd like to hear any comments you guys have about it, and there will definitely be more videos coming, so if you want to see them, you can click that little subscribe button up there. There's also a link to my first video, and if you want to recommend the game for me to do next, you can go ahead and say that in the comments too. Alright, I'll see you later.